my name is um, Benjamin, and um, I'm a carpenter by profession. Um, I'm a lover of music, and my Muslim friend says um, any music with instruments, it's not good. I want to know why it is so, or any explanation to that statement. The brother asked the question that his Muslim friends tell him that any music with instrument is not correct. Why? Our Prophet Muhammad said he prohibited the use of musical instrument except the duff. The duff is, you know, one side open drum. It's not a drum, it's a duffly. The reason is that when you play music, there are chances that you can get deviated, you get carried away. In poetry, etc., you get carried away. They start praising people and they go beyond the limits. So music takes you away many a times. You hear in the songs, pop songs, beat it, beat it. What does it mean you don't understand? Yet people are repeating it, correct? Funky town, what funky town? It doesn't have any meaning only. So when people hear music and they start singing, they say things which have no meaning and they enjoy. It takes you away from the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Takes you away from worship of Almighty God. That's the reason it is not allowed in Islam. Brother, but these are all minor issues. The main issue today we are discussing is about Almighty God. Do you believe there is one God? Yeah, I believe in one God. Do you believe Jesus is God? No. Very good. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God? I believe he is the messenger of God. MashaAllah. So if you believe that there is no one worthy of worship except Almighty God, and you believe that Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God, that means you are a Muslim. These are minor issues whether the music is allowed or not. The main issue is that if you believe there is one God, and if you believe Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God, you enter into the fold of Islam. Would you like to say it in Arabic? I came to ask questions. Please, can you let me finish my questions before? No, your question is, I already answered your question. Didn't I answer your question? You asked me, why is musical instrument not allowed? That's, I gave you the answer. Um, that's the first question. I have a different... Oh, so you have one more question? Yeah, I have more questions. Ah, so I should know that. I cannot read people's mind. Okay. How many questions do you have, brother? Um, should we... How many more questions do you have? About four. Four? Yeah. <laughs> Normally, we ask one question at a time, and for next question, go behind the queue. If it's short questions, I'll take it, otherwise I'll go behind the queue. Yes, brother, what's the next question? Um, believing um, Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God makes you a Muslim. What about believing Jesus Christ is the messenger of God? Very good question. If you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God, you become a Muslim. If you believe Jesus is the messenger of God, that also makes you a Muslim. You cannot be a Muslim if you do not believe Jesus is the messenger of God. I told you earlier that Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was born miraculously without any main intervention. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind lepers with God's permission. The Muslim and the Krishna are going together. But we do not believe he's God. So if you believe in all the messengers, Adam, Abraham, Ismail, Isaac, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all, then you become a Muslim. And we believe that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final messenger. If you believe this and believe in one God, then you become a Muslim. Next two questions. Okay. Sh should I believe in the Bible? Should you believe in the Bible? Yes, as please. far as should you believe in the Bible as the word of God, according to me, Bible is not the word of God. What we Muslims believe is the Injil, the revelation, the wahi, which was given to Jesus, peace be upon him. But the present Bible is not the original wahi. It's a corrupted form. All the revelation that came before the last and final revelation, the Quran, the Torah, the Zabul, the Injil, because they were meant for a particular group of people, as I mentioned in my talk, Almighty God did not think it fit to be preserved. It was meant for those people in that time. All these books have been changed. But because Quran is the last and final revelation of Almighty God, it was not revealed only for the Muslims or the Arabs. It was revealed for the whole of humankind. 
and it's supposed to be followed till eternity. Because of that, Almighty God will preserve this book. It's mentioned in Surah Hijar, chapter number 15, verse number 9, that we have revealed the Quran and we shall guard it from corruption. So this Quran is in the pure, authentic form. The present Bible is a changed form. It contains words of God. It contains words of prophet. It contains words of historians. It contains pornography. It contains contradictions. It's a mixture. So whatever matches with the Quran, we have no objection in agreeing. That part is the word of God. The last question, brother. If you believe the Bible is not the word of God, then why do you quote from... Very good question. If I do not believe the Bible to be the word of God, why do I quote? I quote it because the Christians believe it to be the word of God. For example, the non-Muslim doesn't believe the Quran is the word of God. But because I believe Quran is the word of God, he will point out anything from the Quran I will follow. I will not tell him, I don't do believe Quran is the word of God. Because I believe Quran is the word of God, I have to follow every word, every letter of the Quran. Similarly, I do not believe everything of the Bible to be the word of God, but the Christian believe. Now, because the Christian believe Bible is the word of God, he has to follow every word, every letter of the Bible. As I told you, some portion of the Bible are correct. So I'm trying to bring the commonalities between Quran and the Bible. And one commonality is the mention of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So from the Bible, which I feel is a mixture of correct and wrong things, but the Christian believes everything is correct. So I'm proving from that Bible, quoting Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse number 18, Gospel of John chapter 14, verse 6, all these verses, and proving to the Christians who believe the Bible is the word of God, that if you believe in the Bible, you also have to believe in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And if you believe in Prophet Muhammad, you also have to believe in the Quran. So I'm getting him closer to the truth. I'm a student of comparative religion. I even quote the Vedas. The Hindus believe Veda is the word of God. And from the Vedas, I get them closer to the Quran. So I hope I've answered all your four questions. Or do you have one more question? There are many questions, but uh, I'll put it. <laughs> no, but for now, you said there are four questions. When I asked you earlier, you said four. Yeah, now I you said, said many. But your basic four questions have been answered, correct? Yeah, yeah. And I asked you a question earlier. Two questions. Do you believe that none worthy of worship except Allah? And you said yes. I said yes. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad as the messenger of Allah? I believe he's the messenger of Allah. Masha, that means you're a Muslim. So now, what I told you, if you agree that there is no one worthy of worship except Almighty God, Allah, and you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, these are the minimum two requirements for a person to become a Muslim. The other things are later on. So if you believe in these two things, you become a Muslim. Would you like to say it in Arabic? Brother, would you like to say it in Arabic? No, I have to make, I have to make more research. No, no, when you agree Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God, khalas the research. You can yet do more research, no problem. Even I study more and more about Prophet Muhammad. The more I study, the more I like. I keep on reading his sira. One time, two time, ten time, I love it. I'm not telling you after you become Muslim, you have to stop reading. Yet you have to continue. Even I keep on reading the Quran. The more I read the Quran, the more knowledge I get. Correct? So I'm not telling you to stop reading. But if you agree, these are the minimum two things required. Then if you accept it, the chances of agreeing is more. You say you want to learn English. First, you have to take admission to the school. Correct? You can't say I will stay outside and then learn. You have to join. And once you join, you start going regular. If you don't join, then you don't go regular. Then the chances of you learning is less. Correct? Yeah. So would you like to join the religion of Islam? You believe there's one God? You believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? These are the minimum two things. According to me, you're already a Muslim. According to me, you're already a Muslim. So if Muslim means one who submits his will to God. If I believe um, Muhammad is the messenger of God and I believe there is only one God, should I repeat what you say before I become a real Muslim? No, it's not required. Once you believe, you become. It's between you and Allah. It's between you and God. You don't have to say it in public also. You can even hide quietly and follow the religion. No one can stop you. But normally when you proclaim, 
the chances you will grow in that religion is more. If your life is in danger and you do it hidingly, it's accepted. You don't have to say it in front of the public. It's between you and Allah. I don't have to interfere with it. But normally when you proclaim it, the chances you will grow in it and the practice increases better. If you say no, I don't want to proclaim it, no one can force you. Therefore I ask, is anyone forcing you? I have that question. Forcing in Islam is prohibited. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 256, La ikra fiddin. There is no compulsion in religion, truth stands out clear from error. But it continues. If you hold the hand of Allah, he will take you from darkness to light. If you hold the hand of the Satan, he will take you from light to darkness. But when you see it, there are chances more that other people now will come and give you more information. You will do more research. And the chances of you growing, going to standard 2, 3, 4, 10, graduate, postgraduate, is here. Do you understand? So seeing is not compulsory, it is preferable. Would you like to say it? According to me, you're already a Muslim. Would you like to say it? If you want to say, say yes, otherwise no, no one can force you. No, I don't, I don't want to say it. Okay, but you believe, keep on believing it, you can practice even individually, no problem. I would request you to read more. And if you believe that there is no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad is a messenger, you become a Muslim and may Allah grant you good in this world and the akhirah, may Allah put you in Jannah. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Most welcome.